I am currently working on a tutorial series for tool changes with my E3D Beta 30 model. And while I was discussing the possible content of tutorials with the team of E3D, because who will know the difficulties better than their support, I was offered to work on a production model. The amount of new features in contrast to my beta version are much more than you might think. To show you this serious tool changer in the upcoming videos, I have to assemble the kit now and I want to use this opportunity to show you how fantastic the tool changer is designed and a few tricks while building it. After all, I've disassembled or rebuilt my beta 30 model about 10 times or so already, so I'm quite familiar with it. I will follow the very extensive and detailed assembly instructions of E3D at least roughly. A link to this documentation can be found in the video description down below. But I will also use my own experiences in many places to show you the easy way as in the upcoming tutorials. This setup video should not and cannot replace the documentation of E3D. Rather, I want to show you how fast and easy you can build the tool changer too. In this video, I will assemble the main E3D motion system that is like a really beefy Core XY setup with a massive single Z axis. Okay, we start by putting the acrylic sheet. I already mounted the T-nuts in it on both sides. The middle one is the, the screws are re reversed. So the T-nuts on the sides are this side and in the middle is on my side. And the only thing you have to look for here is this uh, small cutout on the bottom because the Z motor has the connection on the same side so the cable goes through here. So start with peeling off the foil and you can do it before or after installing the T-nuts, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's all we do. The cutouts for the extruder motors uh, will be left in there for now. We are going to remove them in a later stage. Set it aside and pick the other acrylic sheet with the two big cutouts here and wiggle this one out of it. All we need is this one, set it aside <clears throat> and now we peel the foil off. This one will work as a guide for the assembly. So we need this and then we start with the bottom sheet. It comes well packaged uh, in a lot of foam and we pick uh, in the cradle of the Z motor we have extrusions. There are four extrusions and they are all equal so you can't, you cannot mix up anything. Only thing you have to uh, you have to look out for is that you put in the feet of the printer in the outermost corners.
Whew, it's hot in here. It's like uh, 32 degrees Celsius. And now use the bracket we just picked out earlier and put it <coughs> to the put it to the side of the extrusion and just feel if the bracket is flush with the bottom plate when fixing the extrusion. For the feet you need a 12 mm wrench. The slots in the back of the printer are for venting, venting holes and as this is the back side of the printer we pick the acrylic sheet from before and the four circles are on the top and it goes inside of the printer against the back of the extrusions. Only thing to take a look is that the cutout on the bottom is on uh, the right side if you look into the printer from the front <coughs> Other than that just align the t-nuts Don't over tighten these nuts Because the acrylic will crack if you over tighten it and maybe you have to loosen these t-nuts in a minute because we are putting on the top plate and have maybe have to readjust the extrusions a bit. Oh and then don't lose don't use Loctite on these because the Loctite will disintegrate the acrylic and it will shatter. Or crack. Shatter is the wrong. So align these in a later step and for now we will put on the top plate. It comes like this in the box and you just pull it out and it's all pre-assembled. You don't have to do anything on these. The belts are tightened equally and it's all uh, laid out perfectly fine. E3D uses assembly jigs and stuff for it and when we are going to put it, the belts down on the pre-built frame we have to look for these cutouts on the top. The belts have to slip in these cutouts. Uh, that's the only thing you have to look for right now. So 
And now we are going to put in the screws from the top and aligning the extrusions with the acrylics helper from before. I'll leave the back side loose so I can lift the top plate a bit because the manual says you should mount the pre-assembled Z rail. Let me see if I can show it to you. Uh, not very well. Okay, so between this part and this part here on the bottom and you have also shove it in these nuts and when shoving this big thing in um, we will scratch the bottom plate so E3D in foresight put some paper in we use this so we don't make marks let me twist it I hope you can see it and I lift it a bit so I can get it in and make sure that the T-nuts all fall in the slot. Just rotate them 90 degrees without fixing them so the Z-stage will not fall over. Now carefully removing the paper underneath. No scratches on the bottom plate. And feel with your fingers if it's if it's aligned with the top plate and the needs the corners or the sides needs to be flush okay and now we plate on the side to reach the the bottom mounting points the leveling feet or the, the, the feet goes in to the front. Okay. And you can shove the the uh, Z rail. I don't know if you can see it. I can shove it left left to right a bit or, or the printer is laying on its side so front to back. That's like one millimeter or so. And uh, E3D says you should, um, should put in a straight edge on this side, but I found this rather unreliable. And I tried to mount it just in between the two outermost positions. That's not much. I have to lift it a bit because it's gravity is forcing it down on one side. I'm happy with this. Okay, so that was the frame. It was rather fast and now the last thing we have to mount is the bed mount and before we do this here we retighten the acrylics so hand tight don't over tighten the acrylic Okay, acrylic is fixed. Now the the bed. And in the manual it says that you should um, pick a level and take a measurement of how level the top plate is. And then 
mount the bed holder, print bed holder, equally level to the top. I think we just figure that out on a later stage and for now just mount it. There is so little, so little adjustment that it really doesn't matter that much like shown in the manual. So four screws with washers and you're done. One of these screws will be uh, removed in a later stage because we have to put on a ground wire on this for safety reasons. So let me show you how much space to wiggle there is. On the outermost side, I think it's, it's a millimeter up. So if we completely ignore it, we can wiggle it by a millimeter on the outermost point of the print bed. That's much, okay, I know. But if you just let it set, Gravity does its things. So now we need to tighten the top ones we didn't before. Okay. Okay. So everything is aligned, everything is flush, mounted. And that's the mechanical side of the motion system. It's all pre-assembled, motors mounted, belts in, and the Z-bed mount is there as well. Next step, electronics and a little pre-assemble of the uh, controller boards and power supply and so on. Thanks. Bye. Do you have specific questions about tool changers or would you like me to explain a specific topic about it? Put your questions in the comments down below and I will try to answer it in one of the upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss out the next one, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching, see you next time.